Lord, the word this morning, let us pray. Lord, we pray that we may be attentive to your word today. We know your word is more powerful than a two-edged sword, that your word is living. That is where your word is different from any other book we, we will read. A, a book in school, a book in the library, a book on tablet. Lord, we know that the Bible is your word, and it is alive. Now you can speak to our hearts as we read it. So we pray that your word may come alive to our hearts today. That we may be encouraged, that we may be built up, that we may be challenged, that we may be strengthened. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The message today is entitled, Alone, But Not Alone. It is sad that we live in a society where we can be around a lot of people, but we can feel alone. When I was younger, and when I was in school, it was often that I would feel alone because I didn't fit into a special group of students. So sometimes we can be, as a young person, in a school, and we may not fit into a certain group, and we can feel lonely. We can feel not understood. Or we can be in a big city, and we can have a lot of people around us in our neighborhood, but we can still feel alone. And sometimes there are people who have thousands of Facebook friends, because they are lonely and they want contact. But often many of those friends aren't real friends because how many of the Facebook friends that people have are real friends who are there when you're in trouble. There was a special cartoon, a Ziggy cartoon, which recently pictured a, the small pudgy man sitting alone in a boat, drifting toward a tunnel. And on the tunnel was a sign, Tunnel of Meaningful Relationships. Loneliness is a growing problem in our society. There was a study by the American Council of Life Insurance. It reported that the most lonely group in the United States, can you guess what the loneliest group is in the United States? Can anyone guess the loneliest group among all groups of people, the loneliest group of, of all people in the United States? Probably it, it would be a club in Canada. Seniors? No. Seniors? No. College students. College students. Students in university. Isn't that surprising? Yet you have often college students that are university students that have moved away from home. Moved away from friends, they're trying to establish uh, contacts and relationships. They're under the pressure to perform from parents. And they can be very lonely. Next on the list are divorced people, those on social assistance, single moms, rural students, host wives, and the elderly. It's amazing, it comes right at, at the end of the, of the list. Charles Swindoll, to point out how lonely people can be, he mentioned an ad that was placed in a newspaper in Kansas, one of the states in the, in the United States. And the ad read, I will listen to you talk for 30 minutes without saying anything for $5. I can listen to you without comment, just pay $5. Swindle said it sounded like a hoax, but this person was serious. Did anyone call? A lot of people. It wasn't long before the person who placed the ad was receiving 10 to 20 calls a day from people who wanted to pay the $5 just to have someone to listen to them. The pain of loneliness was so sharp that some were willing to try anything for half an hour of companionship. And it's sad too that we can be around people, but so often we just want to be heard, but the people who we are around do not have time to listen. And we become very lonely. So loneliness 
is a reality for many people at whatever age. We can be lonely as a young person. We can be lonely as a middle-aged person. We can be lonely as an older person. If we do not have a relationship with God or a relationship with other people, we can become very lonely. But there are sources of encouragement in the Bible. Things that we can be aware of to fight loneliness. One important area is companionship. When God created Adam in Genesis 1, He saw that Adam was lonely. Adam was by himself. I mean, other than a lot of animals, and birds, and fish, and insects. Adam was by himself. So God created Eve in Genesis 2.18 for companionship. Often we think of the disciples in the Bible. We look at the followers of Jesus, Peter and John and Luke, and we think they were all single people. But they weren't all single. In Matthew 8, 14 to 18, it mentions mother-in-law of Peter. Peter had a wife. Peter had a companion to support him. 1 Corinthians 7, 2, it says, Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. In 1 Corinthians 7, 9, Paul said, For those who lack control the physical senses that it's better to marry than burn with lust. It's a correction. It's a protection. Uh, sex within marriage is what God has ordained. But we don't look for a partner just to fulfill our physical appetites. Just to undercut that aspect of loneliness. For it says in Matthew 19.6, what God has brought together, let no one pull apart. Many times people enter into relationships just to cut the edge of loneliness, to meet the sexual appetites, and they don't go into a relationship praying, Lord, bring me the right one. They don't go into a relationship that's built on a foundation of trust and friendship. They enter into a companionship relationship that has no foundation, and it crumbles. So companionship helps loneliness when we realize that God can help us and direct us and lead us to the right person. Because if we get into the wrong relationship, it can be a, a toxic companionship. And we can be just as lonely in the relationship as we were outside of the relationship. Amen? Isn't that true? So companionship is, is an important element to loneliness. Especially if we're in a relationship where there is a good ability of communication. Where we can have someone who is a friend that we can talk to. A second area is friendship. Do you know one of the greatest investments of your time is to invest in friends? You know, so many people are spending time in other things, but they don't realize the importance of friendship. And I don't mean Facebook friendship. I mean, I have Facebook friends. But the most precious friends are those who are friends who are there when you're in trouble. Amen. Friends who are there when there's nothing that they get out of you except supporting you as a friend. How often do we invest in friendships? You know, we're so busy today with, with our electronic involvement that, and we're so time conscious that we forget that to develop a friendship takes time. But it's a worthwhile investment. Do you know in the Bible, it mentions King David. King David had a friend called Jonathan. Jonathan was the son of King Saul. And early on in their friendship, 
Jonathan was able to warn David that his father, King Saul, was going to kill David. So Jonathan saved his friend David's life. Many, many years they were, were separated. It mentions the friendship of 1 Samuel 18, 1 to 3. In 2 Samuel 1, verses 17 to 27, many, many, many years later, there was a battle in which King Saul and Jonathan were killed, and it said David grieved because he missed his friend, Jonathan. Are we investing in friendships? You know, sometimes we will not take the initiative to develop a friendship. We will sit back and say, let people come to me. Sometimes we need to step out and initiate contact with people. It's not like we're, we're, that people are naturally drawn to us. Sometimes we need to take the initiative. So there are many people today that, and I see some people with 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 Facebook friends. But how many of those people do they really know? How many people are real friends? So we see the importance in the Bible placed on companionship. We see the importance placed on friendship because if we don't have either one of those, it can be very lonely. C.S. Lewis, the Christian writer, said, Friendship is unnecessary, like philosophy, like art. It has no survival value. Rather, it is one of those things that give value to survival. It makes a difference when we go through the difficulties in life and have friends to go along with us through that struggle and through that difficulty. C.S. Lewis said, is any pleasure on earth as great as a circle of Christian friends by a good fire? The next best thing to being wise oneself is to live in a circle of those who are. It's great to have wise friends who can give us advice. Someone that we can share with who's not going to condemn us or say, Oh, you're foolish. Oh, how could you think that? But having friends that we can trust enough to share that they're not going to condemn us but we're, they're going to give us wise advice, which we can accept or reject. But they're going to give us advice that they may know that we might not like. Because a true friend is not going to just tell us what we want to hear. True? Yes. Sometimes it's going to tell us things that have hurt. Not intentionally, but revealing to us things in our life that we're doing that we're too blind to see that are hurting us and others. Value of true friends. Armand M. Nicoli, a professor of psychiatry at Hartford Medical School, explained that Sigmund Freud, who was the father of psychiatry, he died at the age of 83. So this well-known man who founded modern psychology, he died bitter and disillusioned. This Viennese physician, one of the most influential thinkers of our time, had little compassion for the common person. He was above all, regular people. He wrote in 1918, I have found little that is good about human beings on the whole. In my experience, most of them are trash. What an attitude to have toward people. No matter whether they publicly subscribe to this or that ethical doctrine or not at all. Freud died with no friends at all. It is well known that he had broken with all of his followers. His end was bitter. He died alone. He died with no support, with no friends. He had pushed everyone away because of his attitude. Friends are important. The importance of companionship, the importance of friendship, and sometimes it's not easy to make friends, right? Sometimes we initially reject it, but we should keep trying. Sometimes the friends we make in school are friends who will be with us for life. 
talking to you young people. Sometimes a friend you have in school will be friends that will be with you for life. True. Your true friends. Do not sacrifice your friends for material things or for fame. Because those friendships are more important than the money that you may get or the fame that you may get that will pass away. You will see as you get older, friendships are very important. I encourage you, invest time in your friends. Because they will stick with you in the important times of life. Third is a reliance on God. Now Paul was not married. Paul was single. I just don't want to give the impression that those who are single are second class to those that are married. Because sometimes God will call people into singlehood. The ability to be single for service to God. There's sometimes God calls people into singlehood. That doesn't mean they're less important to God than those who are married. So Paul was single. He was committed to the ministry that God had called him into. Paul relied on God. Paul knew that beyond those who he was involved with in ministry, beyond those that he met as a tent maker, he was, a, he was also involved in work, making tents to support himself. Beyond all that, he knew that he served a God who was there at all times. Jesus in Matthew 28, verse 20 said, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. We know wherever we are, we are never alone. So whether we're a boy or a girl, whether we're a senior, whether we're in between, we have that promise that even when others may not be listening to us, we can pray to God and He hears us. We have that confidence. There's a, a favorite song called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Now, that song was written in the 19th century. And it was written during a time of pain. It was not written by the man Joseph M. Scriven. It was not written at a time that he was going through happy times. It was written through a time of severe pain, emotional pain. When he went as a young man, he was engaged to be married to a woman who he had known and loved for a long time. And all the preparations had been made for the wedding ceremony, and the date had been fixed. They were all ready to get married. Just before the wedding day, the bride accidentally drowned. Everything shattered. And he was plunged into deep sorrow, depression. From that sad experience came a deep sense of his dependence upon Jesus. And of the great truth that he expressed in the words of the song, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Covered with a load of care. Precious Savior is still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do your friends despise for safety? We can have friends who can disagree with us. Do our friends despise for safety? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In His arms He'll take and shield you. You will find your solace, your comfort there. Blessed Savior, you have promised, you will all our burdens bear. May we ever, Lord, be bringing all to you in earnest prayer. Soon in glory, bright and clouded, there will be no need for prayer. Rapture, praise, and endless worship will be our sweet portion there. What a precious promise. 
that when we have Jesus in our heart, we are never alone. Yes, it's good to have friends to share with. It's good to have a shoulder to cry on. But there are times when that may not be possible. Jesus is there. He knows our hearts. He is our friend. So we have companionship, friendship, reliance on God. And another one that we can look at is acts of kindness. Do you know sometimes when you're lonely, you become so focused on yourself, you can't see anything but yourself. But when we are doing acts of kindness toward others, it will help our loneliness and will help the loneliness of others. Because when we're doing things for others, we stop thinking about being lonely. Whether it's taking people out for errands, um, bringing food to people, taking a pet to visit, especially the elderly. People take, sometimes take pets to nursing homes where, or hospitals where they're allowed. And just the touch of those pets has ministry to those elderly people. Being a listening ear, making a phone call, even sending a text at the right time. There was a visiting caregiver who ministered to an elderly woman in her home. And she could hardly get away from the home different times after she had done her routine task because the woman wanted to talk and talk and talk because the woman was lonely. She had no, one, no family around, no one to talk to. And so the caregiver, on her own, went to a store and bought some pots of flowers and secretly went and planted the flowers outside the window, one of the windows of, of this elderly woman. And when she, when she next went back, the woman said, Oh, I wonder where those flowers came from. The caregiver didn't say anything, but the woman knew. And the woman talked about how now she enjoyed looking out her window at the beautiful butterflies that were coming to the flowers and the hummingbirds and the bees. And when the caregiver left that day, the woman didn't even notice the caregiver had left. Because she was focused on the beauty outside of her window. She wasn't lonely anymore. People often need more than four walls to look at or a mirror where they can only see themselves. When we look, when we look at helping others, it takes our focus off of ourselves. By lightening up another person's life, we light up our own life. Luke 6.35 says, But love your enemies and do good, and lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Colossians 3.12, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, and of kindness, and of humility, and of gentleness, and of patience. We are called to have acts of kindness. So being obedient to performing acts of kindness is also a way that we can counter loneliness. Yes. Did you know as you minister to others, you are ministered to? Yes. <laughs> as you see God work through you in the lives of others, it touches your heart and you are ministered to. Companionship. Pray to God to provide you that companion, that special person. Don't rush into it looking for that person to cut the edge of loneliness because of sexual desires that need to be met. Pray, Lord, I need a friend. I need a soulmate. I need a person that's equally committed to God to walk along with me in serving you. Amen? Amen. Number two, look for friends. Pray that God will provide you friends. Now, I mentioned Facebook. And often we don't have friends through Facebook. But God has given me friends over the years in different countries through Facebook that I have not met yet. But we have become friends, real friends, on Facebook. Well, one of them is a young man 
who is now married with the, with the young son in Venezuela. That is not a nice country to be living in right now. He, was, he asked me the other day for prayer for his 24-year-old younger brother who's a, a professor of mathematics in a local university and he is having difficulty finding enough food to survive day by day. Now this friend Dave knows that I'm praying for him and his wife and young son and for his family so he asked me to pray for his brother Moses. So I'm saying you can develop friendships as well through Facebook. I'm not, not diminishing Facebook. And there are, there are different people in different parts of the world that I've become friends with, real friends, through contact on Facebook. But you can become friends around here because I can't go for a coffee with my friend in Venezuela to Tim Hortons. I can't go, go and in, enjoy an, an event with him because he is far away in a different country. I pray that God will provide you opportunities to initiate and to make friends here. Within this church, we are a family. We are here to support each other. I pray that there's no one in this church that is fighting loneliness. Because if there are people here fighting loneliness within this church, then we have a problem as a church. Amen? Amen. That shouldn't be. Because if we are here as family, we are here to support each other. We may not agree with each other, but we're here to support each other, to listen and to encourage each other. So the importance of companionship, the importance of friendship, the importance of relying on God, and the importance of doing acts of kindness. Alone, but not all. God is with us. We're part of a greater family. God listens to our prayers. Amen? I never know what God puts in my heart. This is the message He put in my heart for today. You may be fighting loneliness. Loneliness can bring you into depression. Depression can bring you to the point of wanting to give up on everything and everyone including God. It's a pit. I've been there. One of the greatest struggles young people face is depression, loneliness, as you mentioned, college students, but even below college age. Young people can say, oh, my parents don't understand me, and, and my teachers don't understand me, and, and I've got all these struggles, and I don't know who to go to to share, and then, then they get trapped into depression. Because they've got no friends. No one to listen. Are you here today you're struggling with loneliness? What a friend we have in Jesus. He's a friend that'll never be, turn away from you. You're part of the family of God, and we're here to support you. Are you fighting with loneliness and you feel that's a battle that you're losing? Today you can be a winner. We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. He says more than. We're beyond just being conquerors. We're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We have the victory. Not a clue, it's loneliness. God will hear your prayers. If you're one of those that said, hey, hey, I can't be a single person like Paul. Need that special friendship companion, that special companion friendship. Start praying. God, wherever in the world that special person is, for me it was my wife on the other side of the world in Hong Kong, and I'm in Canada, and we meet online. So we didn't even meet in person. But God heard our separate prayers and brought us together. Don't limit what God can do in your prayers. He may lead you to someone who's not even in Canada and make the connection. Pray for friends. God will lead you to friends. But invest your time in those friends who lead you to for that friendship to grow. Rely on God. He never forsakes us. His promises have never been broken and never will be broken. Rely on Him. Do those acts of kindness. Step out of your comfort zone. And reach out to others. I'm not saying all the time people will appreciate what you're doing. But we do it unto God. But in doing that, in providing those means of help, we will be ministered to and we won't be as lonely. After we do that. Amen? Amen.
you struggling with loneliness here today? Is this message one for you? And the keys. Is this something you need to deal with? And say, Lord, I embrace your love for me. I know I'm important as a child of the king. We're important. We're more valuable than the pupils of our lives to God. God knows the number of hairs on our head. God knows, knew us even when we were in our mother's womb. I mean, how much more intimate can that be? God loves us and knows us. So we're not alone. So pray that God will provide you that companion. If that's what the desire in your heart. Pray that God will provide you more true friends. Not fair weather friends that are only there for convenience. And then when things aren't convenient, they dump you. Pray that God will provide you true friends. And invest time in those friends. Rely on God. He will never forsake you. He will never betray his words to you as his followers. Reach out to others. Do those acts of kindness. In obedience to God. But also as a ministry to your own heart. Amen? God spoke into your heart this morning. I don't know. Never know. If God spoke into your heart, this is an opportunity that we can come to God. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm struggling with holiness. Lord, help me deal with it. And He can, and He will. But often the first step toward dealing with the problem is admitting we have a problem. Yes. Right? So if you're struggling with loneliness, you can come here today and say, Lord, help me to deal with this in whatever form or area it takes. God will. Or if there are other areas that, that God has spoken to your heart this morning and you need prayer, I, I never let this opportunity go by for prayer. You need prayer this morning, you come. Not for me. But if God's speaking to your heart about something that you need prayer for, then you come this morning and do it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are there for us. What a friend we have in Jesus. We thank you, there, there, that, Lord, that you would never comfort us. We thank you, Lord, that our prayers are never in vain. That you know our hearts, you know our needs. You know the struggles of loneliness. The pain that they did can cause within our hearts. Lord, I just pray that you will comfort anyone here this morning who has just been struggling with that sharp pain of loneliness, of being misunderstood, of feeling distant to people. Lord, comfort our hearts. Help us to experience your love which passes on, your peace that passes on understanding and your love that is beyond our comprehension. Lord, if, we're, if we have a desire in our heart to have a special person in our life, a companion, Lord, we just pray to you now. I just pray that you will meet that need in anyone who is here. Or anyone who is here who is difficultly making friends and just doesn't seem to have any real friends that are there for them in their deepest need, I just pray, Lord, that you will help them to develop those deep, meaningful friendships. Lord, help us all to deepen our reliance on you, whatever our age. That we can come to you no matter how small the prayer or how big the prayer, knowing that as our mediator of heaven, you're bringing our prayer requests to God the Father. We have that confidence to know that. Help us to rely on you. Lord, you may call us even to be a single, a single for service single to serve you. And like Paul, you will give us the means to do that if that is what you are calling us to do and to be unto you. Lord, help us to not be so focused on ourselves that we don't see the needs of others. Help us to know that as we act with kindness to others, that this will minister to our own hearts. Lord, comfort each one who is here today. You know each need. You know each desire. You know each struggle. Lord, meet each person here at their point of deepest need. Comfort them. Encourage them. Strengthen them. May they leave here this morning rejoicing in you. That you have already given them the victory. That you are already helping them to conquer that challenge in their life. 
Lord, we thank you for that deep love and comfort. Thank you, we will never be, be rejected by you. We may be rejected by others, but we will never be rejected by you. We may be misunderstood by others, but you, Lord, know our hearts better than anyone. Help us, Lord, to deepen our dependence on you daily. And I pray for each one here. Lord, comfort any hearts here who are lonely. Bring people into their lives and may they experience the love of God in this church and be a, feel a part of this family so that they may not feel alone and separated and fighting battles by themselves. We just ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guide our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may his blessing be upon you in this coming week and may each one of us be a blessing to others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.